Hello and welcome to Calix TV. I'm Tom Bain in London. It's 4.30 p.m. in London, 11.30 Eastern Time and 12.30 in Bermuda. Today in history, today on the 19th of August, 1955, Hurricane Diane killed 200 people and was the first storm uh, to kill, uh, sorry, to cost uh, more than $1 billion in damage. That was hit the northeast of the United States. Today, in 1978, 422 people died in an arson fire at a movie theatre or cinema in Iran. And today, in 1991, saw the coup in which Russian President Mikhail Gorbachev was deposed. And now to the news. Seven people have been killed uh, and 14 injured in a bomb blast in China's Jiangjing region. As you'll see from the map, the Jiangjing region is in the west of China. The explosion happened in Aksu City, uh, in the uh, westernmost part of that western region. A local government spokeswoman said a Uyghur man drove a three-wheeled vehicle carrying the explosive device into a crowd. The man was arrested at the scene and the investigations were, go were ongoing. The motive behind what to appears to be a bomb blast in the uh, Western city is not yet clear, but many will suspect it is linked to the region's ongoing ethnic tension. There have not been many major incidents over recent months since last year's riots that left nearly 200 people dead, but few people suspect the underlying ethnic problems have been solved. A visitor to the Zhangjiang capital, Urumuri, uh, can instantly see the distrust between the two ethnic groups, and they live mostly in separate areas. Um, we'll keep you updated on any changes there and any escalation in that tension. Mazda is to recall 300,000 vehicles across North America following a fault with a powered steering system. The Japanese car maker said the recall will involve the 2007 to 2009 model Mazda 3S and the Mazda 5S. It covers about 200,000 cars in the US and 100,000 cars in Mexico and Canada. The vehicles may suffer from, a, suffer from a sudden loss of powered steering, so the car make it, maker making it difficult to steer and increasing the risk of accidents. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has been investigating the steering problems. British insurer RSA Insurance would have to crank up its offer for fellow British insurer Aviva's general insurance business by nearly two-thirds to win the backing of larger company shareholders according to an analyst at UBS. UBS puts the high valuation, highest valuation yet on Aviva's casualty and property operations in the UK, Ireland and Canada, suggesting that RSA would have to pay in excess of $8 billion to make the breakup worthwhile for investors. The estimate tops Merrill Lynch's valuation of nearly 5.8, sorry, 8 billion pounds. The estimate tops Merrill Lynch's valuation of 5.8 billion pounds by 38% and RSA's existing approach of £5 billion by 60%. In a note, a member of U UBS's special sales team said, Aviva is dependent on its general insurance business for cash flow and profits. The deal is unlikely to happen. The comments came as Aviva and RSA fight to influence a key group of overlapping shareholders. BlackRock, Legal in General and Scottish Widows Investment Partnership are among asset managers who own significant chunks of both of the FTSE 100 companies. Aviva boss Andy Moss is urging crucial investors to consider the virtues of combining life and non-life units. RSA chief Andy Haste is trying to stir up discontent by highlighting Aviva's weak share price performance. Willis will end its chase pay freeze and bring back uh, annual salary reviews. The broker introduced pay freezes two years ago during the height of the recession but said it will start reviews again in April next year. A Willis spokesman said, we're pleased that Willis will resume its normal practice of annual salary reviews in April 2011. Our people continue to work hard for the economic crisis and soft insurance market to deliver solid results and compete vigorously in their marketplace. Their efforts have put us in a strong position to capitalize on our many opportunities when condition improves. The review is a turning point of two years cost-cutting and pay reforms by Willis to cope with the recession. Last summer, Willis gave its staff the option of sabbaticals on 30% pay and four-day week options. It came just after making 300 staff redundant. 
London and New York based broker also took a tough line on company expenses, slashing accounts compared to the pre credit crunch era. Italian insurer Assicurazioni Generali was the top foreign insurer in the Chinese market for the first half of 2010, according to data provided by China Insurance Regulatory Commission, CIRC. The CIRC's statistical data shows that Generali China Life, a joint venture of Generali and China National Petroleum Corporation, generated premium incomes of the equivalent of $666 million dollars or 518 million euros over the period. In the ranking of foreign insurers in China, generally China Life surpassed AIA, whose premium income came in around about 830, sorry, 438 million euros, and Hatai Life, the, that generated 424 million euros. Aeon has secured $2.5 billion in funding for the cash portion of its $4.9 billion acquisition of human resource and outsourcing company Hewitt Associates. Aon arranged for a $1 billion unsecured three-year loan plus $1.5 billion unsecured bridge loan, according to U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filings. Also, Aon has the option to issue up to $1.5 billion of senior debt notes instead of all or some of the bridge facility or to refinance the bridge facility at a later date. The broker will use proceeds from the borrowings or issuances to pay off to pay all or a portion of its cash consideration for the Hewitt transaction. The merger transaction, which triples the size of Aon Human Resources and outsourcing business, is based on a $50 a share for Hewitt stock, which is a 41% premium for Hewitt's closing stock price on July the 9th, the last trading day before the deal was announced. Aon said it intends to pay 50% stock and 50% cash. Australian insurance and reinsurance group QB has released its first half figures with a warning which a warning it will take discipline and patience in the European markets as the wait for the expected continues. Global gross premium written was up 6% uh, on the year at £1.57 billion for the first half. Combined operating ratio fell to 88.4% down from 89.9% for the same half year last year. Uh, European operations produced a strong underwriting result and insurance profit margin for the year despite challenging market conditions. An increase in large individual risk and catastrophe claims, one-off costs on systems integration and lower interest yields on policy shareholder funds. The London insurance market was subject to increased catastrophe and large individual loss activity principally Chilean earthquake, deep water rise and oil rig disaster and weather cl related claims in Europe and Australia. These claims are expected to selectively harden property reinsurance rates and offshore rates according to the underwriter who was quoted. Looking to the coming months, the message is one of caution in Europe. The statement continued, patience and discipline are key pending the next cycle upturn with our targeted gross written premium of 2010 remaining stable at £2.6 billion. With ILS issuances on the rise, Aon Benfield Securities, the security, securities and investment banking operation of Aon Benfield, has announced the launch of Aon Benfield ILS indices, which will provide, quote, a quantitative view of monthly insurance linked securities returns since December 2005. Paul Schultz, president of Aon Benfield Securities, said the launch and ongoing administration of Aon Benfield ILS indices demonstrates the firm's continued leadership in the insurance-linked securities market. Additionally, we believe the added data and transparency will lead to new investments in this market and provide greater capital alternatives for our clients. Now, reinsurance broker Guy Carpenter is set to expand its Bermuda team with the appointment of former Deutsche Bank Convergence Executive Eric Manning. Mr. Manning will join the company on September the 27th in the global specialties business, reporting to divisional chairman Kevin Fisher. His role will involve developing market-based retrocession reinsurance solutions, according to a Guy Carpenter statement. And Mr. Manning has almost 10 years' experience in the convergence markets. And finally today, a bull has injured 40 people after jumping out of the arena at a